I'd like to pick up an area that both uh, Dr. Suttle and Dr. Anker Smith have referred to in detail, and um, which my colleague Deputy Brady went into, and that's in relation to the, the, the specifics of the chilling effect. And as Dr. Suttle said himself, these are his assumptions, he pointed towards hypotheticals and potential arguments. And I was wondering, is it, is it possible? Is it feasible to lay out clear examples where national governments have said this is the policy we would like to pursue, but we are too concerned about um, legislative actions that we're not, and that's why we're watering it down? Okay, um, thank you, uh, Mr. Richmond, for your for your questions. I mean, uh, a few few examples of regulatory chill uh, that are well known are um, uh, the case of um, New Zealand uh, uh, delaying for six and a half years its plain packaging legislation uh, because of the ISDS case against Australia. Uh, that was specifically done because of the ISDS case. So New Zealand delayed for six and a half years plain packaging smoking, which of course uh, was quite beneficial to these uh, uh, tobacco companies um, and perhaps less so uh, for, uh, uh, let's say, um, public health in New Zealand. Uh, another well-known example is um, Indonesia, uh, where uh, Indonesia um, decided to uh, continue or um, issue environmental permits for mining operations in, in Indonesia um, as a result of threats of ISDS litigation. I can give you the specifics. I don't have it like on, on the top of my head how it, uh, how it exactly uh, worked. Uh, another example is uh, Romania, where... Uh, Romania has decided to withdraw the nomination of the Rogia Montagna um, um, area as a world a UNESCO World Heritage Site because that, um, let's say, if it would, would become a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the biggest gold mine um, in Europe in that area would not receive an environmental permit. And that's also uh, because of the uh, ISDS uh, claim um, issued by uh, a Canadian mining company against uh, Romania. So um, actually Romania has admitted that that was the reason for the withdrawal, the ISDS uh, case. Um, and, and there are a few other examples. Um, I think uh, maybe a bit broader of a point uh, would be that, for instance, the Netherlands is now sued for 1.4 billion euros uh, for its moratorium on the use of coal in 2030 by uh, a German uh, coal uh, electricity producer. And uh, that's 1.4 billion euros. If, if that claim is one, uh, 1.4 billion euros is a lot of money that you could do a lot of other things for, for instance, isolation of housing or other uh, climate change uh, projects. So it's, it's also, it's not only a matter of, um, let's say a direct prevention of regulation, but it also uh, makes it, less possible for governments to do certain things because 1.4 billion euros is just a lot of money that you could spend on other things. Uh, Thank you. Um, so picking up on, on a couple of, uh, of Deputy Richmond's questions, um, I think Dr. Anderson has already given a lot of quite compelling examples of chilling effect. Um, I'll just refer you to this, uh, this paper by uh, the Mulca paper, which you find linked in the submission you have from me, and it identifies 17 countries where the plain packaging litigation against Australia and Uruguay led to either delays or non or non introduction of that specific policy. Um, now, I said that this sort of uh, this, these sort of studies are necessarily hypothetical. They're, they're hypothetical in the following sense, because you're trying to work out is the the risk of litigation the reason why legislation wasn't adopted. And what we can do as as researchers, what we can do as, as human beings, is we can look at countries even say, okay, well, there's a proposal for legislation. And there are a number of relevant interest groups and there are a number of relevant political groups expressing their preference for what to do. And there's the litigation, there's the legislation being introduced or not being introduced. But it's in the nature of things that there's sort of a black box in the middle there, which is where government and parliament decide, are they going to proceed with the legislation or not? And it's always very difficult to say what exactly was the reason why you went one way or the other. Um, here's another. Here's another powerful example. And Dr. Anderson already mentioned the uh, the claims against the Netherlands in relation to the wind down of coal. Um, Germany faced claims ten years ago when it decided to move out of nuclear after the Fukushima um, after the Fukushima disaster, and uh, Vattenfall, or a, a Swedish power generator, 
um, brought a claim against the German government, essentially saying that their their rights as the operators of nuclear power plants in Germany had been unfairly uh, had uh, had been unfairly impacted by that decision. Um, that case is ongoing, but it's probably significant that when Germany subsequently decided it was going to start winding down its coal plants, it took a different route to the Netherlands route. It decided to buy out, effectively, to pay off the operators of coal plants rather than simply regulating them out of existence. Um, can I say that the reason for that is their experience with the claims in relation to nuclear? I mean, I certainly can't say it for certain. Um, but I can say these are, these, 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 these are strongly suggestive of ISDS claims having an impact on the ways particular countries choose to regulate in subsequent cases. Um, there's a, an example of French uh, climate change law from three years ago, where, again, it's very prominently put forward. The original law and the law that was ultimately adopted are significantly different, significantly, and include significantly, significantly more leeway for existing fossil fuel extractors. Why? Well, again, part of the story that we see is there were threats of ISDS claims if the original law was, was implemented in its original form. Can I say that the threat of the ISDS claim was definitely the reason why the change happened? I can't. A whole bunch of political processes happened in between. But if you want evidence, this is, this is about as compelling evidence as you're going to find of any factor, not just ISDS, but if you want to try and explain why any factor caused legislation, this is about as good as you, as you can expect to find. Um, 